Hello everybody, I'm Andy with Liminal Entertainment Technologies and in this video I'm going to show you how to switch a Zoom production directly from inside of vMix. And what we're going to do here is we're basically going to override the PTZ camera system with virtual inputs and when we call up one of those virtual inputs into the preview monitor it's going to cause Zoom to pin somebody that we've selected to the second display. And the way we're going to get that to happen automatically is using a program that we created called Zoom OSC and we're also going to use the vMix activator system. And we're going to use a program in between them called Isadora that's going to translate the MIDI coming out of the activator system into OSE, which Zoom OSE uses to pin people to the second display. So we'll walk you through all of that and get you set up, and then we'll, at the end we'll talk about some suggestions for vMix about how we can make this a little simpler moving forward. But let's get right into it. So here we are inside of Zoom with our usual suspects, Pat, Liz, Jane, and John that you've seen in the other tutorials. And the goal here is to be able to switch between these four participants directly from within vMix without having to fuss around with the Zoom user interface. And so the first thing that we're going to do after joining the call with Zoom OSC is we are going to run Zoom OSC in multi-monitor mode. So now I have this second display that I can use the pin to function to be able to put somebody on. So I'm going to drag that over to a second monitor and go full screen on it. Now the rest of this we are going to do inside of vMix next. So I'm going to go into my vMix scene and the goal here is to be able to Again, by bringing something into the preview bus, we want to be able to select the right input we want. So I'm going to start by just pulling in that um, that second uh, that sec external display that contains the uh, the pin to this location. That's display three on my computer. So I'm going to bring that in, and yes, there in fact is that input that we just moved on to the second display. And again, we've talked about in other videos how to use Zoom OSC to you know select who's on that using something like the BitFocus Companion for your Stream Deck or QLab or a media server or something like that, right? What we want to do here is just when I call up an input to the preview bus with a different name of you know the participant that we want to be looking at at that time and the right thumbnail and everything like that, I want to just have that automatically cause that display to select the person as though it were a PTZ camera. And so I kind of think of my display inputs as PTZ cameras and the people of the gallery view, um, the people who are on the call with video on essentially, as presets for that PTZ camera. And we're basically going to convince vMix to do the same. So we're going to go over here and we're going to select a virtual PTZ device. We're going to uh, hit the connect button here. And this is going to give us virtual PTZ controls that we're not actually going to use. Um, and we're going to just go ahead and create an input at this position. And then I'm going to uh, close out of this. And I'm going to go over to my um, configuration for this virtual input that we created. And I'm just going to rename it to the name of the participant, Pat. And I'm going to close out of that. And now we have a PTZ input named Pat. Now back inside of Zoom OSC, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to manually pin the next person to the second screen that I want to be looking at. All right, I'm going to bring that out of the way. And so now we have, you see the, the Pat keyframe, uh, that this, this thumbnail has stayed the same. And now the live input is, of course, Liz, who we just pinned to the second display. So I'm going to go back into the settings. I'm going to go back into the PTZ. And I'm going to create an input at this position again. And then I'm going to go into the settings for Liz. And I'm going to go over to the general settings. And I'm just going to type in the username Liz. And we're just going to repeat this process. Now I want to pin Jane to the second display. And so I'm going to replace pin on second screen to the user interface. I'm going to go back to the settings wheel, go down to the PTZ section, create a virtual input at that position and then adjust the name so that I can easily reference it by looking just at the names of the inputs as well as the thumbnails that we're creating persistently. And then finally, I'm gonna replace the pin with John on the second display, move this out of the way, go over to the cog wheel and set the PTZ virtual input at that position. And finally, I'm just gonna rename this input again to John. So once I've done that, I now have four inputs that I can, uh, that I can work with here, representing the four people who are in the gallery view with video on. And uh, the next thing we are going to do is kind of a workaround. And this is something that um, if anybody has more experience with vMix, maybe you can explain why this is the case, but we're gonna use activators. And for the activators to work reliably, I actually need an additional input for some reason inside of my display. And I'll show you what the, what the problem will be if we don't have that. But I'm just gonna go ahead and create a color bars input here and I'll just take that onto program just to clear things out of the way and we'll work in our preview monitor for now because that's really all we care about. So I have these inputs here with a bonus input that I, uh, that I need in order to be able to make this work. And so I'm gonna go over to the settings and we're gonna work in the vMix activator system to make this happen. So vMix activators basically allows you to associate an event with vMix sending a MIDI note or a MIDI control. And so if I look at the activators here, I can add a new one and what I want to do here is I want to select a control change and I'll leave it on channel one for now. And what I want to do is I want to enter the Zoom OSC target ID for this user. So right now we haven't 
really talked too much about target IDs, but there's a way in Zoom OSC to be able to give every user in the Zoom call a numeric identifier. And this will allow us to um, very easily repatch this for any Zoom call that we're in and also allow the activator system to communicate. So we're going to put the user ID that we're going to associate with each person in the call, and it's just a number. So let's say that Pat is number one. So Pat is going to get the uh, note zero to one change. So one on the right hand side is what we're going to set it to, and we'll leave it on channel one. Now the event is going to be an input preview, and the input that we want to have trigger when we do this is Pat's input. So now what we've done here is we've taken an input preview when we do Pat, on the preview monitor, it's going to send a MIDI control change and it's going to set the note to one. Finally, under the type, I'm just going to select button LED and I'm going to hit OK. And you've, uh, as you can already see, this is pinned Pat to the second display. Now, why did that happen? Well, it's because down here we are running the Isadora Media Server. And what is this doing? Well, what this is doing here is it is um, looking at the, uh, the control watcher, the OS, uh, excuse me, the MIDI control watcher. And what we're doing here is when we see a MIDI note, we're adding just a little bit of delay and propagating the controller value into the OSC multi-transmit. And this is creating a zoom slash target ID slash pin two command. This is gonna pin somebody with a specific target ID to the second display. Now, how did I create these target IDs? Well, I have these helper nodes here and these together allow me to create a target list file and update the target list. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit the update button and then I'm gonna hit the save button. And then I'm going to go over into my documents folder where uh, I have my default save location for my target list.txt. And again, we'll explain this in more detail later. But this list here, beginning counting with zero, is the target IDs of everybody on this list. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just reorganize the names here so that we have the right order. So um, Zoom OSC is just going to be input zero. Then we're going to do Pat. And then let's look at our inputs. Liz was next, then Jane and John. So let's just confirm that our text file is set up properly. Let's see what we have. We have Pat, Liz, Jane, and John. Great. So I'm just going to save this. I'm going to pump back into Isadora and I'm going to hit load. And what this has done now is this has associated the proper target IDs with everybody on the call. Um, so as we continue to build out the activators, this is going to uh, set us up automatically. So I'm going to just clone this and then I'm going to edit it. I'm going to update to Liz and I'm going to set this note to two. This is the second person in my group, and I'm going to hit OK. And you can see we've pinned Liz to the second display. So this is showing us that it's starting to build properly. We're going to do the same thing with Jane, who is input three for us. And then we're going to do it one more time. We're going to do it for John. So I'm going to go back to edit. I'm going to select the input John, and we are going to set this to four, our fourth person that we want to work with. And we've seen that now we've we've summoned up everybody on the program display, which is great. Now there's a somewhat odd step that we have to do now, and this is involving that input, the color bars input. I found that if I only put in the number of inputs that I needed here, um, the last input would send an unexpected value on the MIDI line. And I'm not exactly sure why vMix does this. Maybe if somebody knows, you could explain it to me. But in order to work around that for now in a way that I understand, I'm just going to clone this one more time. And I'm just going to edit this to be uh, the color bars input that I'm never going to bring into preview anyway. So it doesn't really matter. I'm just going to put some, you know, maybe five here. I don't, I'm not really planning to use this person, so it doesn't matter. Um, but I just have to have it in here for some reason. It'll only work if that additional input is set. And maybe somebody who understands this can explain why to me. But so what you see here on the left is the current feed of my monitor. And as I click through the different inputs on this list, it pins them to the second display. This is basically allowing us to call somebody into preview. And it's kind of, it's, it's working in sort of a, a clever way where when we call this preview input, it is sending a MIDI note, we're converting it to OSC and we're telling Zoom OSC to pin that person. So really these, the, we don't simultaneously have all these inputs, but we're simulating that so that when I call up Jane, for example, and bring Jane into the preview monitor, I can actually take that. I can bring Jane into program now because Jane is pinned on the second display. And this can scale really, really well for every unique Zoom OSC instance that you have a monitor capture feed of that you can pull in, you can basically treat that like a camera. And when you do that, you can make presets for all the people in a Zoom call without even knowing who's gonna be in the call because the only thing that you have to change for every production that you do is this file. You just have to write out the Zoom usernames and nothing else has to be touched here. You don't have to recreate these inputs. You don't have to really change the thumbnails unless you 
you know, you really want to. Um, in, in theory, you could operate just sort of knowing who the placeholders were, and you can make your thumbnails a little more agnostic to, you know, names. Maybe not, maybe don't name them these things, but, you know, you can make them something more general. And all you have to do to actually make this all work is just type out the user's order um, that you want to have control of in these preview input boxes. And you can save this patch and reuse it and save the activators and reuse it and save your Isadora file and reuse it. And it's again, it's extremely powerful to be able just to click on any input here and call it up into the system. It allows you to switch really, really easily. And the only time you'll get yourself into a pickle is if you do the same kind of thing that would be uh, you know, problematic when you were doing PTZ camera switches, which is you know taking a live move or something like that when you didn't intend to by pulling up something on the preview bus that was a virtual input that was going to send a Visca command to your PTZ camera, for example. You know, you wouldn't want to do that. But just as so long as you follow the same kind of respect and philosophy that you'd have for PTZ cameras, this is going to work perfectly for you. Now, again, it's a little it's a little clunky to have this sort of additional layer going on here uh, with Isadora and the intermediate. Now, don't get me wrong. I love Isadora, but there's absolutely no reason it should be involved in a system like this. The best solution would be to make a little bit of a change to the way that vMix works. And so I want to propose the following modification to the edit activator system. I'd like direct support of open sound control. I'd like to be able to set an IP address and port and send a custom OSC message based on that event uh, instead of a MIDI note. And it, you know, I'm not asking for a complete overhaul of vMix to have all this you know, huge OSC API. I'm just asking very specifically to have an additional control option that's open sound control that lets me define a command that I wanna send and to a particular address and a particular port. And if we had that, we could do this entire thing with just Zoom OSC and vMix, and we wouldn't need Isadora in the middle to do the translation for us. And that would be extraordinarily powerful, as you can imagine. So anyway, I hope this little demo was interesting for you to consider how you might be able to use Zoom OSC to help elevate your virtual production in vMix. And as always, if you have any questions, shoot us an email at info at liminalet.com. We'll get back to you as soon as possible. And feel free to check out the other videos on this channel to learn a little bit more about Zoom OSC.